Hey everyone, so I just finished doing my test of the auto part ejector with the actuator and everything worked out just like I had hoped. Uh, in a few seconds I'll cut to a video showing the end of the print and how this all worked in releasing the part from the PEI sheet and then uh, I'll cut to another video after that explaining how the whole setup works um, that I recorded while this was printing. So if you'd like to stay for that and just um, just uh, see how I did it. You can uh, wait towards the end of the video. So I'm, I'm really excited because everything worked perfectly and uh, I'm going to be able to update the print farm to work autonomously and just make prints, release them, and just cycle through and just keep looping through and mass produce these. So, all right, thanks guys. All right, so the part should be stopping any second now and hopefully everything goes well. All right. It works. So now I just need to create the G code to after the part is broken, uh, have the print head push it out of the way and start a new print. Hey guys, so I have the auto part ejector project going here. I printed a bracket for the Ender 3 so I can fix this actuated here, the actuator. And I've also uh, used this limit switch to activate the the actuator and that works just by simply uh, pressing it and at the end of the print when the print is done the print head is going to move all the way and um, it's first it's going to put the position the bed in position where this tab is directly over the shaft of the actuator and then the print head is going to press this should raise bend the PEI sheet uh, spring steel uh, bed uh, plate and then after that's done the print head will move the part over and begin a new print so I didn't in the G code I only got up to hitting the limit switch and breaking the part free I haven't done the actual moving of the part yet I might create some sort of uh, lever or arm here just to help uh, with that and make it easier so the circuit that I'm using is a double pull double throw relay that's activated by 12 volts and the way that is activated is again once you hit that limit switch turns on the coil right now there's a constant 12 volt supply to the actuator to keep it in its retracted state uh, and the good thing about this actuator internally it has a limit switch so even though 12 volts is here the actuator is not uh, actually it uh, doesn't actually have 12 volts applied so it's not overheating it's not until the polarity is reversed using this relay configuration that the actuator will begin to extend and then again when the print head moves out of the way it'll retract so uh, the part should be done pretty soon here, so we'll see how it works and see what I need to tweak.